Welcome to Jenkins Docs Office Hours. It's the 22nd of March, and let's get it started. Topics on my list, SheCode Africa Contributhon project, uh, Jenkins 2.277.1, the most recent long-term support release. 2.277.2 is coming. Uh, Meg, any other topics you want to include on the list? Uh, no, are we, what about the summer of code? Is that? Oh, oh, that's a that very good dates, one. I thought the well, 24th actually, was, a, was a milestone of some sort. Yeah, so Google season of docs, very good one, right? Application is due this week. Uh, need to review and discuss the application, the ideas and the application. That's very good. Yeah, let's do that. Sorry for the clattering of my keyboard, but I love my keyboard. Okay. I love click. I love keyboards that click. It doesn't bother me at all. Okay, great. I hate so, touch screen. <laughs> all right. Okay. So yeah, that's very good. Let's let's go through each of those, and and I think there are things we need to that we can help each other on with each of those. Great. Okay. So first, um, Shikot Africa. Uh, delighted to say that we've been accepted. There we are. All right. And if I recall correctly, sponsors also lists. No, they don't show who their current sponsors are on this page. Let's see. So mentoring orgs, accepted orgs. This is us. And, but I do have to show um, the tweets that have arrived. Uh, Jenkins CI. Whoops, Jenkins CI tweeted about it. Here. Ooh. And we blogged about it here. Yay. And, and so it's it's a good story that we have to tell. And and as even a cool thing is okay, I acknowledge that I I cheated and let's see, where do I find the replies to it? Ah, I don't know, let's see. But if I look at mine, I was, I did a little bit, I, I as a personal tweet, I can be a little more, a little more bold. So what I said was, you wanna help create a more diverse open source community? Contribute. <laughs> and Good ask for your you. company to contribute. <laughs> Yes, and, and this has actually got has received surprising, surprisingly positive feedback in terms of the the response in the in the by people who read these things. So very interesting, positive. interesting. And I don't know if anybody will act on it, but delighted that that SheCode Africa's work is being highlighted and that we can we can help them in a little bit. So looking forward to it, and and there their stuff that's going on as well. All right. So let's see, we should link to the blog post so that people are aware that we did that. So did that and the pipeline projects, the projects idea are, he, whoops. Oh yeah, this is their form of our project idea. Ah. Okay. And when I last talked to Zinab, she was great with our idea that we would take up to three and was very grateful for the details. Thanks for your help, Meg, in going through this, uh, reviewing the steps, assuring that we know how to do them, etc. So very, very positive. Oh, good. Well, she is a force to be reckoned with, isn't she? Yeah, and that's great. Okay, I so, still think we should think about hiring her when she's done with her studies. Whatever <laughs> <okay>. it takes. <laughs> Just me. So let's see. There we go. And now let's get this one back. So we've got this tweet recorded. And Oleg did a very nice post on LinkedIn of it. Oh, goody. So. Oh, let me go look for that. I, I don't, I'm not good about sharing stuff on LinkedIn, but I will, I will find Oleg's and share it on mine too. Yeah, and, and that's that's part of the part of the fun of it actually is to watch. Uh, oddly enough, I think we now on LinkedIn have more followers 
than we do on um, than we do on Twitter. Interesting. Yeah, it is really quite cool. So let's find his. Uh, oh, maybe I don't. See. Oh, yeah, here it is. Good. There's it. So if we grab a link to this one, copy link to post, and there's the LinkedIn post. So just generally positive. It's, it's really good. And, and that also helps us highlight all sorts of progress. So now, Meg, in terms of that one, I guess one thing for to safety check here is, is that um, what we what we intended was that we'll do twice a week meetings with the uh, with those that we're mentoring, one during sort of your working hours and one during Kristen and my working hours. Okay. Um, uh, if that doesn't work for you, so one during one basically at the start start of day in Africa and one at after end of day in Africa. Uh, if we need to adjust it, we will, we, I don't know which day it will be. I don't know any of those things we'll, we'll talk about when the, the candidates are selected and then work through it to be sure that, hey, it works for all of us. Um, will there be on the one that I'm in, will there be somebody else there mentoring who like knows something? Uh, I hadn't planned on it, but we can consider that. My thought was we let you coach on on things like writing style and and content things where they submit a pull request and you say, hey, here here is coaching on your specific pull requests. And then Kristen and I will handle things on, oh, hey, I did this step in the detailed instructions and it didn't work the way I expected. Okay, I'm good with that then. Um, does, so, does the Jenkins doc project have a style guide or anything like that? Does not. Okay, so, so you just so have to just... apply your best judgment on style. Okay. Good. In particular, because these changes will be going into plugins, right. it's even harder to apply a style guide because uh, it's it will eventually arrive on the, after the plugin releases with the changes, it will arrive on Jenkins.io, the website, but it'll also be visible in their Jenkins instance when they run it. So, okay, good. If I have mixed okay. feelings about, I mean, sometimes we get obsessed with adherence to a style. It has to be good English syntax in some world. Well, and, and that's the piece where I think you are, you are intensely valuable because you're so good at doing reviews of, of English and good technical content, right? So yeah. that's something that I, I, Kristen and I are, are weaker at, whereas we can help with the more detailed, oh, this is how you compile a plugin stuff. Right, okay. And I can, if I, if I see something technical that I'm suspicious of, I can just alert you, keep my mouth shut. And it will, yeah, just, just tell them, hey, check with Mark and Kristen during your session with the two of them. Right. Yeah, so, I'm not shy about commenting on content and phrasing, but I'm also not the expert that you are. So my thought is we get, they get the best of both worlds is, is you're, you're free to tell them, gee, I don't know about how that, that specific compilation question you're asking, uh, ask Mark and Kristen. Okay, good. Cool. All right. Okay. And uh, precise times and days to be negotiated, right? Because we, we have to see. Now, now, I guess one thing that I've wondered is if, this, if they get a lot of subscribers, do we want to consider taking more than three? And, and if they were all on this same project, it might be worth it, but I'd, I'd probably limit us upper bound to not more than five, maybe six, just because I fear we'd be overwhelmed if, trying to mentor that many yeah it would if we if this group if this meeting had more people attending regularly right I would if, if we had a larger group of mentors we'd be fine right yeah okay yeah. good let's i would say if if we if we're just overwhelmed with really talented people you know we could revisit right um, and we could now 
are we the only ones doing this? Like, is Oleg going to be involved in it? Oleg has, Oleg has offered to assist if there are technical details that need his assistance. And so he's, he's willing to assist. But I think at this point, the things that we've outlined, the details precisely enough that I don't expect to need his help. Right. But okay. for instance, if someone comes in with a, a very specific plugin or a, a plugin that needs Oleg's exact skills, he's more than willing to help and has agreed to do so. Right, I just, but yeah, but there aren't any projects other than the doc project being put in. No, this is, yes. this pipeline examples project idea is the only project idea so far. Now we right. could, we Which could, a, it's potential we could get others. Little, it's, it's, half, it's half and half actually. Well, and, and that's, that's specifically why I chose right. it, right? The right. fact that this is, this requires that they do some development. It benefits them with experience with development. And we also get a doc improvement in the process. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think it's brilliant. Yes. Okay. Good. Well, we'll see. There's always All surprises, right, so, but they will learn from those too. Right. Anything else on Chico to Africa? Looks good. To, um, what are the dates? Do we know when the dates are? Uh, so start should start, as far as I understand, April 1 to April 30th. Okay. And uh, I believe selection happens... So selection, I believe, happens in in late March. And then the projects run from April 1 to April 30th. Okay. We are now officially in late March, I think. So right, exactly. So, so like any day we I assume hear. they're they're still trying to get final funding to decide how many women they can they can pay during this during this period. Right. All right. Okay, anything else on Chico Africa? That looks good to me. Okay, so next piece is Jenkins, the LTS, the 2.277.1 LTS is, is a major update to Jenkins that includes uh, form modernization and several other really cool changes. So configuration form modernization is the one that has been has been causing the most struggles in the community as far as we can tell. Uh, but there are others as well in it that that are worth people considering and how they deal with it. So uh, let's see. That is going to blow screenshots right and left again, isn't it? See the actually it improves screen it changes screenshot but it improves them dramatically. Oh, yeah. I'm just remember I'm maintaining code that's on our courses that are on what 2.222 or something. Yeah, so you'll want to get those up to 277. Agreed. Oh, I would love to. Yeah, can't do it right now. Ah, got it. Labs can't support it, but do we just this just blew up in our faces? So I think Tammy just thought got a little more interested in it than she was. Got it. Um, yeah. So now now there was a we also did a Jenkins online meetup. Uh, video that mm. spends an hour and Darren Pope and I did a let's see where is the Jenkins online meetup there it is okay so if we look at this one this is the video that takes we had Jesse Glick Tim Jacome from the, so Jesse Glick from CloudBees, Tim, Tim Jacome from the Jenkins community in the UK and Felix Karuga from CloudBees with me and Oleg going through a panel discussion talking about it. Oh, yeah, and, okay. Uh, video, so Jenkins online meetup reviewed the changes and, and what they mean. And what we're seeing is that we're getting proof, repeated proof, that there are plenty of people who, even with our best attempts to guide them, don't read the upgrade guide, don't read the install notes, and, and just post questions. And the crucial steps are upgrade your plugins, update your plugins, upgrade Jenkins, update your plugins again. Uh -huh. And that's that's atypical. That is not common for a Jenkins release no. to need that. 
but because of the significant UI improvements here, they they need to make that change. Okay, are most of the plugins updated so they will work? Uh, most is way too is too strong. Uh, many, Some. many, and certainly the most popular ones are. Okay. Uh, there is a there is a, 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 a Jira dashboard that shows um, with the plugins that have, are known to not be ready for it. Ah, okay. And and right now there's a little bit of angst in one of those. I'm gonna drag a page in here so we can see it and grab a copy of that. So one of those, this one here at the very top, the TFS plugin highlights a class of problem in, in plugins where the TFS plugin is no longer being distributed. It's no longer being distributed because the people who maintain it have stopped maintaining it. And uh, it's no longer being distributed because it's not open source software. It uh -huh. has a dependency in it that as far as we could tell at the time was not open source. It looks like it may now have been made open source. So it might be able to come back, but it's also got a, it's got a, a, a security problem. Ew. And so users who were using Microsoft's Team Foundation server um, have this plugin that has an own security problem and has not been updated for tables to div. So if they upgrade to 2.277.1, they, they have a bump. They have a, oops, it doesn't work. Uh. And, and the answer is you either remove TFS or you stay with the older Jenkins version. Yep. Because we've stopped distributing this plugin. And so they've got, but here you see a number of people commenting on, hey, yeah, this is this is what's happening. Oh boy. It happens. Yeah, well, and and some plugins, yeah, that's just the reality. Some plugins are we've had other cases like that where they're they're using running a deprecated plugin. And we aren't updating deprecated plugins to nope. to support the new user interface. They need to switch to use the modern plugins. Yep. Uh, the the most the visible examples there are things like warnings, uh, and uh, let's see, find bugs, warnings, uh, other old static analysis. plugins. Others are no longer distributed, no longer, let's see, how do you say it? No longer, yeah, yeah no longer distributed by the project. TFS is the, the example there. All right. Any other, any questions you've got on 277.1? No. Okay. I'll go look at it. Sounds like you should know about it. Yeah. All right. So 277.2 is coming. Uh, that The release candidate will be out in a few days. And then after two weeks, we'll deliver the, the actual release. And that delivery, let's see, I should bring up release checklist because this is one of those things that I'm going to use more and more of these things. Uh, I like this particular thing so much. I am so impressed by it. Uh, it was created by Tim Jacome, uh, our release officer. And, and I have just been absolutely astonished at how effective uh, checklists are in GitHub. Okay, so here is uh, let's make it big enough to read. Here is a, a release checklist for Jenkins 2.277.2. And so it's just an editable form, an editable page. And I can go through and I happen to be the release lead for this one, but so I can go through and use each each item in the checklist to verify, have we done this step? Have we done yes. this step? 
or strike it out to say, okay, we're not doing this step and it's intentional. We know it. Right. So, so the, the exercise here is, is really quite impressive. And what it's done is it's captured the knowledge that Tim has, that Ah. Oliver Gonja has, that Daniel Beck has, that Olivier Vernin have about the process we use to generate a, a long-term support release. Yes. So, so, oh, in fact, here, I've got to fix while we're Everybody here, knows have... where we are on it and we don't have one little thing that slips through the cracks. Well, and, and it's okay. It's, it's helped me to reduce the number of mistakes made during, during certain phases. It's also a, a good way to highlight, hey, this, ah, release.ci, there it is, good, okay. Highlight the, the kinds of things that may have issues, et cetera. So, and this one, for example, says run the job on a particular server, but we don't have the infrastructure set yet, so I just strike it out. And now my checklist has this nice, nice strike through right there. Aha, uh-huh, yes. Beautiful. Yeah. It, so it, it really, and oh, oh, this is publish a pre release. Don't know if we'll do that one. I'll have to think about that. So, again, the, the amazing power of Atul Gawande's uh, concept of checklists. So, yes. All right. So that's that's the easy part. Let me put a link into the checklist because that's helpful for me. Now, next topic was Google Season of Docs. Okay, so this one, um, we've posted a draft application proposal and ideas to Jenkins.io. Uh, We've got to do the application this week, though. So I wanted to get your feedback on what we're th- what's what's been discussed so far. So let's go find that on Jenkins.io, and it's in Community Documentation Season of Docs Season of Docs Status Page. Okay, so here is the organization proposal. And here is the, oh, and the application draft. Oh yes, okay, good. So that was one we need to discuss. And here are the project ideas. Okay, so first challenge is let's talk to the project ideas. These are, uh, I've put the one that I think should be top of our list and the one we actually submit here first. So let's, All right, so let's grab that and say, okay, so okay, organization proposal is there. Okay, so so the organization proposal is who we are, what we do, and the proposal here is we want to expand the documentation that describes how to run Jenkins on Kubernetes. Last year's Google Season of Docs started this effort. Zenob did a fine job with it, but there is much, much more that needs to be done and, and lots more that we can do, and we think that Google Season of Docs is a great way to fund a professional writer to do that. Okay. So the the idea then is here's the the concept. It says, hey, we've got lots of presentations and lots of articles, but we need to expand the documentation describing Jenkins on Kubernetes and concepts, techniques, choices, etc. With work areas and topics, here are the things that we had identified before as, hey, these are the things we'd like to do and we need, I've got to do some more detailing on this. The the complication here is that in addition to this, we have to propose a budget that Google will give to 
to the Jenkins project that we then use to pay this writer. Would that also be budget to give them a lab environment they can play with? Um, usually what we do is we go beg the, beg the providers okay. to let us use, let have, to have the provider donate uh, capacity or we beg the Jenkins project infrastructure to, to donate. Okay. Okay. In, in as an example, Oracle has a, a thing where they'll give you three hundred dollars worth of credit for a month. Okay. Amazon has the same that th same thing. Google has the same thing. So there, you've covered three months just by switching from one provider to the next. Ah. Uh -huh. And this is this does not include the agent itch issues for Kubernetes, right? So for oh no, it does. It it needs to. In fact, that's okay. part of the. Part of the part of this exercise is people need to understand how to use Kubernetes agents, how to use them effectively, how to deal with the, the challenges that go with their being completely ephemeral, so they disappear immediately after use. Those kind of things, absolutely. Well, they don't have to be ephemeral. Kubernetes agents, well, okay, strictly speaking, they don't have to be, but it's it's certainly most common that they are. I should, okay. you're right. It's not mandatory. You can connect a static agent to a Kubernetes uh, cluster. It's just not typical uh, unless okay. you're running Windows or you're running specialized hardware. I thought there was something that you might want to for Maven to maintain that setup or something. R right. And that's, and that's, that's sort of the, that's one of the interesting complications, right? Is, hey, what if I want to cache build artifacts from one build to the next? Or cache dependencies from one build to the next, right? And that's a that's a cool topic for this for this project idea. So, is this what is the organization of the eventual documentation out of this? Is this a separate set of documentation that's everything about running Jenkins on Kubernetes, or is it subsections of the regular running Jenkins? And then here's which here's the extra stuff for Kubernetes. Subsections of the Jenkins handbook is how we'd envisioned it. And so what we see now, if we look at the content we have now that Xenob created, uh, we have an installing Jack Jenkins chapter, if you will, um, in the user handbook. And inside that chapter, there's a section on Kubernetes. Right. And then in the in other sections, there will be similarly Kubernetes, Kubernetes specific items that we'll add there. So for instance, system administration will have a Kubernetes section, managing Jenkins will probably have sections that are detailed specifically for Kubernetes. So like managing security Pipe, and security. Yeah, and pipeline have... certainly is a good one to have something about Kubernetes because actually let's here, let's do this because you and I talking through this is really a good thing to do. Okay, so Kubernetes documentation sections and sections and topics and let's just capture them so we've got installing with and xenob's already done installing with multiple methods where it includes helm and uh, helm and operator uh, and i think one other technique uh, but then we've we've got maintaining a configuration with configuration as code and then maintaining job definitions with uh, job DSL. Uh, I don't know if we want to. I know I, I am deeply in love with maintaining job definitions in my in a Docker image. Ah, yeah. it just works great for me. Let's see. That that's when we should maybe we put that here as. Uh, maintaining a Docker image, image of your Jenkins of, a, of the Jenkins controller with plugins. Right. Um, are there areas of Jenkins administration that are not affected by whether you're on Kubernetes or not? There are it, certain. Should we list the? Is that worth listing the things that are not affected? So I, mean, I, I would make the assumption that every, things are not affected unless we tell them that they are, because most things are not affected by that. Okay. Uh, but there are there are special cases like agents in a Kubernetes cluster 
and maybe we call it ephemeral agents in a Kubernetes cluster. And then the more, more interesting one of static agents in a Kubernetes cluster. This one, ephemeral agents is probably the 95% or more of cases that users want, but there will be times when, hey, here's this special case, you need this. Right. What about uh, folders? Oh. Are folders, do folders show up in Kubernetes or are they just another thing on a master? So they're just another part of, of the, the, they're actually a part of this job, this Docker, Docker image definition and the job definitions. So those two things cover folders quite well. How about high availability? Oh, that's an interesting one. Yes. All right. So it's uh, such a hot top. I mean, basically you get it for mm. free sort of, right? Except well, you know, actually you, you, you get it, but you need to know how to recover, how to, how to set up. For instance, your pod may be saved, but maybe you want to be sure that you're saving your data off on something too. Right. And yeah, so that's, I think that's a good data. Let's, well, let's, let's talk about, there's one that webhook so managing, how would we say it? Managing startup time. No, what's a better way to say it? Um, uh, improving availability. How would this just call it availability improvement? Okay, all right. So here it's things like um, handling, handling, uh, pod failures. Another is uh, webhook, webhook uh, relays uh, for um, while Jenkins is restarting, those kind of things. Uh -huh. This is one that Gareth Evans has some cool things on. So uh -huh. good topics, yes. Okay, and is that, do we need one on recovering from a failure? Oh, in yes, very good, yep. Yeah, very good, okay. Um, uh, we may also want something on, probably something on artifact management, right? So uh, where should you store, where to, where to put your artifacts? artifacts and why. And what happens, can you run say artifactory on Kubernetes also? On a you can, Kubernetes? oh, that's, that's another good one. So maybe and does that, that, does that change anything? I don't know, it maybe you don't see that at that point, if you're just using Nexus or artifactory to store. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a good question. So I'm I was thinking of things here. like, for instance, if I decide I want to run Jenkins, plus Artifactory, plus Giddy on a single cluster, right? Those kind of things. Right. What about, I've heard mention of running Jenkins on a traditional VM or even bare metal, but having agents on Kubernetes. Ah, interesting. Okay, so that one is a relatively specialized, let me know. Note it though. So I heard that Blima was saying that they're seeing a lot of that. They don't, people have got what they've got and they don't want to rewrite that. But they right, want, they so, need more agents and they want to get, when well, they want to throw in Kubernetes agents. And uh -huh. that, that, you know, that that gives them a lot of flexibility and power that. Good, good suggestion. Okay. So that's where uh, agents, uh, let's call it. Kubernetes agents, Kubernetes agents to a to a non Kubernetes controller. Controller, yes. Uh, and that's actually something using Kubernetes for capacity. Uh, even if yes. Jenkins is, even if the controller is not yet in Kubernetes. Right. And, and that's a good story because um, we're moving that direction 
direction with uh, ci.jenkins.io. Uh -huh. our, our big instance, Damien DePortal is working on it where we've got a, we've got a virtual machine that hosts Jenkins and he's looking at eventually it will be on Kubernetes, but even before the, before the controller is on Kubernetes, we need the agents on Kubernetes so that we can transition the jobs before we ever transition the controller. So ah. by adding Kubernetes resources, we can detect Kubernetes specific issues, resolve them, you know, incrementally make our transition. So incremental, so a progressive transition from locally hosted, if you will, from VM hosted to Kubernetes hosted. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thanks for your patience while we go through this. Oh no, this I'm learning more than you are. Um, if there are there any special security settings issues? Ah, very good one. Right. Very good. Securing Jenkins in Kubernetes. And there we might say common mistakes. Uh -huh. Um sensitive areas, uh, managing credentials in general. So yes. managing, let's manage, call it managing secrets, credentials, etc. And the choices there include things like separate Kubernetes secrets or uh, separate vaults, separate credential storage mechanisms, separate what do you call them? Credential repositories. Okay. Like CyberArk, uh, like Hashim, um, uh, HashiCorp's uh, Vault, um, the Azure Credential Store, AWS, and Google all have credential stores that they 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 use that they provide. So good. Okay. Um, but what about um, authorization that's done? Does anything of that change on Kubernetes? It should not, but that's a, it's a good one to authorization is a good one to point them to the, the standard common techniques like You know, and the common techniques, LDAP, uh, Google Auth, OAuth, um, let's see, AWS. I think we've got something for AWS that does OAuth. Uh, Active Directory is certainly in there, et cetera. Um, by the way, though, that is authentication, not authorization. Oh, oh, sorry. You're right. Thank you very much. Good point. Don't you hate writers? You should go to lunch with the writers sometime. It's really fun. Everybody <laughs> pulls out their red pencils and hits the menu. Yeah. Um, okay. So authorization, uh, those techniques. So RBAC, um, no. project authorization, those kind of things. Well, RBAC is our proprietary one. There is a role. Oh God, there is a role based open source one. That is not, we cannot yes, call Yes. And it, it's called role based strategy. Role strategy. Right, yeah. role strategy, uh, project, uh, project role. Is it project roles? No, just project status. But you assign everybody to a project and then give permissions to the project. Yeah, okay. Um, and others, yep. Um, so for me, those I'm less concerned about because the documentation is already there and, and accurate and should work. A pipeline is one though that should be in here because it's really part of it is how do we use ephemeral agents and part of it is pipelines on Kubernetes agents. And there are some capabilities that Kubernetes provides that give greater flexibility for pipelines uh, that aren't available without Kubernetes. Okay. What about backups? Ah, that's a good one, right? So that one is because you know, we have we such had, a good story for Jenkins about backups, anyhow. Backup, yeah. Well, so backup is is using 
using yeah yeah there's a whole story there so using it's not a pretty one uh, let's see. well using cloud vendor uh, storage backup techniques right so things like um, what I'm used to is the free BSD concept of I want a snapshot mm -hmm. And that same thing exists on all the cloud providers. You say, I want a snapshot. What you get is this point in time backup that happens in, in a matter of seconds. Right. And we, I mean, and it makes me wonder why we ever talk about backup. The, you know, I started, why, how do we not have good backup? But it's because we, you don't need them there. It's really an anachronism, isn't it? You just need the snapshot. Well, but if you don't take the snapshot, you have no backup. So, so there's right. an element of the that. The snapshot where, is your backup. And if your if your if your file system does not support snapshotting, uh -huh. and and there are certainly plenty that that do not for performance reasons, right? It's right. There's a penalty that you pay by choosing a storage system that has snapshotting, and and that that performance penalty sometimes may be worth it, sometimes not. And they're saving and restoring. Right. Can I restore yep. from not the new, not the latest snapshot? Right. Um, Good. Okay. Did we, we mention HA, but did we talk about like configuring the redundancy that you might need to make HA work? This in Kubernetes, it's not really a high, high availability in that sense. What it's yeah. doing is it, it relies on it's, it's more of a failover behavior where you say, hey, my pod failed that was running Jenkins. The storage that's backing it is still there because it's on redundant storage. Right. And so the fact that it failed is all I have is the downtime while I bring up a new pod that has the same Jenkins accessing that same storage. Exactly. That's It's like we actually need a conceptual what, what does... It's avoiding single points of failure on Kubernetes. And I think there, there's still a couple that you can't get around, right? Right, but, right. And so that's thus the story is improving availability. Yeah. If I'm not a Kubernetes expert, um, if I'm mm -hmm. just an old IT hack, I want to know what my HA is, how much I can have, and how I set it up, and how it works. Now, right. some, of, some of that is going to be somewhat familiar, and some of it with Kubernetes is radically different, as you said, because... I just stand up a new pod and it's there. Mm -hmm. But uh, but well, well, you get into things like saving, if you wanna be able to restart a pipeline, uh, you automatically can restart any declarative pipeline from the last stage. Right. If you want access to more than the most, re which you can lose real fast by trying it, retrying it, you might lose your workable stage. So you've mm -hmm. got to do some setup if you want older. Where are those older stashes on Kubernetes? I have no idea. And do you do exactly the same thing? Good questions. Okay. I don't. I I know nothing here. I'm so over my head. Um, Let's see, and did I capture? Okay, so we probably. I'm not okay. Thinking about this one. So back to backing up a little bit, pipelines on Kubernetes and how to use them well. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, okay, one more. So, so we've got uh, tutorials on Maven, on Python, and on Node.js. Um, should we consider as a possible candidate a uh, no? Nah, see, a Kubernetes tutorial is probably just too involved to be a tutorial. Unless it's, but, but how does somebody get their feet wet on this? I mean, we, we're not going to teach, they can go elsewhere for Kubernetes training, but it seems uh, like there, it ought to be, can we give them some high level tour? Maybe it's a demo, but what everything looks like on Kubernetes. If you know Jenkins, this is what it looks like on Kubernetes and you'll do this and this the same, and you'll do this totally differently. And this is sort of a hybrid. Well, and, and so there's a concept we've got for that thing. How about what if we were to take, so I'm going to open it up here. Let's look at, here's the, the concept of the solution pages. 
And what we do here is, for instance, we include links to videos that are potentially interesting <laughs> on that topic. Uh -huh. and, and the idea then is, okay, here's this solution page that has recent blog posts about this topic, links to Jenkins online meetups, links to other people's videos. And, and we don't yet have a solutions page for Kubernetes at all. So for me, that makes good sense that one of these blocks here should be Kubernetes. Yes. And there's got it's basically, but we're getting better and better at documenting all the trees. How does a novice figure out that there's a forest there and understand the forest? Right. And and that's that's where well, and that's where introductions um, recommend, you know good good practices uh user story user user um experiences and videos etc right good okay well okay. thank you for helping with this meg i'm about out of time here but i think what i'm going to do is take these things and start putting them into a uh, more details on the on the draft on the proposal good okay yeah and and Charlie, you want to prioritize some of those things are probably nice things for the long term but not the top priorities for this year so right and that's and that's where we'll just i'll do my best you know best guess estimate try to try to propose hey here's what i think we should be doing and this is how it should be structured and why it will help the community if we have it this way right right marvelous i think we're set here yeah good anything Excellent. else meg i'm good all right thanks we'll call it in okay. thank you very much take care thank you bye-bye now bye-bye